This is the first pilot episode of Kendall Zero to Shodan. As such, it may contain imperfections, especially in relation to editing, video and or audio quality, spellings and other associated technical details. We understand that it is not perfect, but we hope to improve the quality of the video series as it progresses. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this first episode and to offer our commitment to continually serve the Kendo community around the world. This message comes to you on behalf of everyone here at Kendo Star, and we really hope you enjoyed the video. Hi, my name's Andy, and this is The Kendo Show. I'd like to welcome you to this first episode in a brand new series called Zero to Shodan. Shodan is the first dan grade in Kendo, and what's signified in many other martial arts with a black belt. Through this video series, I want to take you through everything you need from day one right through to the day of your first dan exam. We'll be starting at the very, very beginning, starting with the basic movements, stances, they hold manners, etiquette, as well as going through all of the techniques, as well as the practice methods that are required for getting you to the level to get your first done. This isn't just a video for beginners though, if you're an instructor or a kendo teacher, this may be a really useful video series. I'll be including lots of different practice methods, as well as practice exercises that will help your students improve and get to the level of shodan as fast as they can. Of course, the content of this video series is based on my own opinions and experience. And if you indeed do hear something that I say or see something in these videos that contradicts what your sensei or your teacher is telling you, you must always take their advice over mine. In the first video, we're going to be talking all about the very, very basics of Kendo. That means we're looking first at Deho. Deho is etiquette and the way in which we exert manners towards each other. It's said that Kendall begins and ends with day or manners, so this is a really, really important part of your journey towards Shodan. We're also going to look at the five fighting stances or kamae in Kendall. We're also going to look at how to assume Chudan no kamae, that is the fighting stance that's most prevalent throughout Kendo as a whole. Finally, before we get stuck in, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and let me know in the comments down below. Also, you can support The Kendo Show by shopping at kendostar.com. Kendostar.com is a fantastic kendo equipment website. Of course, I would say that as I own it. It's all kendo equipment that's been specifically designed for the international kendo community. It's comfortable, durable and protective and it's the highest rated kendo shop on the internet. Even better, all orders have free international shipping. So get over to kendostar.com and have a look at what we've got. So without further ado, let's get straight into the first episode of Kendo Zero to Shodan. I hope you enjoy. Deho, etiquette and manners. It is said that Kendo begins and ends with the day. Manners and etiquette are expressed in Kendo in several ways, including with the use of physical bowing. Let's begin by taking a look at the main types of bows used in Kendo. This type of bow is called Ditsude and is performed while standing. There are two types of Ditsude. The first, towards an opponent or a partner, where we keep eye contact and incline forward from our hips by about 15 degrees. The second type is towards the shawmen or when we bow to the dojo when we enter. This time we incline further by about 30 degrees and our eyes are cast straight down to the floor. Let's take a look at some bad examples. Here the shoulders are hunched and the bow is not performed from the hips, rather it's just a nod of the head. In this example the shinai tilts forward and moves too much as we bow. This time, instead of inclining forward from the hips, the backside is pushed outwards and the chin is raised. In this example, the feet are too far apart and the bow is not sincere. The seated bow is called zade. We incline forward from the hips, keeping our back and neck straight. Our hands come forward simultaneously and form a triangle in front of our face. When returning to the upright position, our hands return to our thighs again simultaneously. Let's take a look at some incorrect examples. Here we are inclining forward too much. Our hips are raised, our neck and back are not straight and the back of our neck is exposed to our partner. 
In this example, as well as inclining too far forward and exposing the back of our neck, our hands are placed far apart instead of being placed together. Here, the hands are not placed simultaneously, but are placed one after another. They are returned in the same fashion. This is incorrect. Now let's take a look at the kamae, or the fighting stances in Kendo. This posture is called Shizentai and is the basis of all postures and stances in Kendo. We stand relaxed yet alert, with a good posture and with our legs at about shoulder width apart. Our hands rest at our sides, lightly holding the shinai, with the tsuru or string facing downwards. The fingers of our right hand are held neatly together. This is an incorrect example where the back is not straight and the shoulders are slouched. This gives an unattentive appearance. Standing up too straight is also incorrect. This stance is called Chudan no Kamae. The right foot extends forward with all toes pointing directly in front. The shinai is held outwards in front of our body towards an imaginary opponent. The grip is relaxed yet firm in the left hand. This is the basis of all fighting stances in kendo and will be the main one we concentrate throughout this video series. This posture is left jodan or hidari jodan no kamae. The left foot steps forward from Chudan as the hands raise over the head. The sword is held at about a 45 degree angle, both when viewed from the front and from the side. This is right Jodan, or Migi Jodan. From the Chudan posture, the hands are lifted straight upwards and the sword is kept at a 45 degree angle when viewed from the side. The feet and body remain in the same position as it did for Chudan no Kamae. This is Hasso no Kamae. This is very similar to the left Jordan posture. The left foot steps forward from Chudan no Kamae and the hands move to this posture. The sword is held at approximately 45 degrees, both when viewed from the front and from the side. This Kamae is most often used in the Nihon Kendo no Kata with a Bokuto rather than with a Shinai. This stance is called Wakigamae. From the Chudan no Kamae posture, we take a large step back with our right foot, placing our body completely side on. The sword is held diagonally downwards and behind our body so that it is completely invisible to an opponent when viewed from the front. Now let's look at kamae kata, or how to assume the kamae. We begin in the shizentai posture with the shinai in our left hand with the tsuru, the string, facing downwards. This position is called sageto. From here we raise the shinai to our hip, keeping the tsukagashira in the centre of our body. The angle between the tsukagashira and the kensen should be approximately 45 degrees. This position is called Taito. We take hold of the Shinai with our right hand by the Tsuba and assume Chudan no Kamae as we step forward with our right foot. Returning the Shinai or putting it away is called Osameto or the Osame Kata. We release the left hand and use our right hand to move the Kensen back diagonally to the left and return the Shinai to the left hip ensuring that Tsuru is facing downwards. As we step back with the right foot, we return to the Taito posture, before once again assuming Sageto. Here, the angle of the Shinai is incorrect, and the sword is withdrawn from below. This time, the sword is withdrawn horizontally. 
and here the elbows are sticking out when assuming tight or. To assume the seated position Seiza, we start from Shizentai and the Sageto position. We move to Taito and starting with the left leg, we slowly sit down in this manner. We move quietly and place the tip of the Shinai on the floor before the Tsuba, being careful not to make any noise. The Shinai is placed at a position where the Tsuba is level with the knee. While seated, our back is straight with good posture and our hands are placed on top of our thighs. When standing up from Seiza, we first take hold of the Shinai in our left hand and assume the Taito posture. Starting with the right leg, we stand up with good posture, rising from the hips. Once risen, we return to the Sagito position. In this video, we have looked at manners and etiquette in Kendo or Leho. We've also looked at the different Kamae, Kamae Kata and Otame Kata. These are the very fundamental basics of Kendo. But without these, it's impossible for us to progress to higher levels. Even high level Kendo can have to revisit these items from time to time to remind themselves of the importance of the basics. So that brings us to the end of the first episode of Kendo Zero to Shodan. I really hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to drop us a like, share and subscribe if you did. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. And remember, this is just the first part in a series of videos that's going to help you get towards Shodan. Now, if you want to see the next episode before everyone else, you can do so by joining the Kendo Show Early Access Group on Facebook. There's a link down there in the description where you can join up. Of course, it's free to join and we post all of our videos there before we post them anywhere else. Thanks a lot for watching today and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again next time on the Kendo Show.